Hey guys, Nozzle here, and today we're back for another YouTube video. Uh, today we're going to be uh, responding to a video from uh, Gubs. Um, he is a retired YouTuber now, and this video was posted four years ago, so hopefully his arguments and you know points have improved since then. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you enjoy this video, dislike and subscribe. Uh, and yeah, if you want me to make my own like Superman vs Goku video, then I probably will in the future. But yeah, I, I should get right into debunking all of his absolutely fantastic points. And logically, it makes sense Superman would win with all of his divine power. I mean, he's lifted a book with infinite pages, resurrected more than once, and essentially became a god himself. So here I'm already taking issue with the video. Uh, first of all, he used an outlier to say that, you know, Superman has infinite strength when, you know, firstly, he needed help to do so, and second, the book was already floating, and thirdly, to have infinite weight, you need to have infinite mass, which obviously the book didn't. Um, and even then, Goku has done all of these things. He has actually shook a world or realm with infinite nothingness and infinite no space. He has also become a god and resurrected on multiple occasions, so I don't really know where he was going with that. Number one, Kryptonite. Starting off with this list is the most obvious choice. Superman's most commonly exploited weakness is his allergy to green rocks. I think it's pretty self-explanatory that Goku wouldn't, you know, use Kryptonite in a fight with Superman. Uh, he's obviously, like, if, if not most infamously known for, you know, wanting a fair fight, as he's given, you know, Vegeta mercy, he's uh, given energy to Frieza, give, given Cell and Moro Senzu beans, you know, just in the middle of the fight, just to keep it fair. So, yeah, he wouldn't use Kryptonite whatsoever. Number two, another planet. Unlike Superman, Goku doesn't really have a specific object or tangible thing that negates or minimizes his powers. In the film Man of Steel, we see that Kal-El coughs up blood while boarding Zod's ship upon leaving Earth. All of the other Kryptonians on board seem perfectly fine, implying that the reason why Superman was weakened is because of the exposure to the new atmosphere. But Goku has been on other worlds and other dimensions, including King Kai's planet with heavy gravity, planet Namek, and literally hell itself. This is probably like the biggest problem with the video, since like, Gubbs is using a composite version of Goku and Superman, and he's kind of nitpicking his sources here. Like, Superman in the comics has literally flown from one universe to another, and flown throughout the universe. He has not been affected by, you know, gravity whatsoever. And if you wanted to use just, you know, DCEU Superman, then that would be fine, but it'd be a complete stomp, because Superman has never shown anything close to even planet level. Um, but he does go on to use feats from the comics, and as you saw in the introduction of this video, did use feats from the comics, so yeah, the point is kind of completely invalid here. Number 3, Kamehameha times 10. But here's the thing, all stars are mostly made up of plasma, and plasma is an entirely different form of matter from solids, liquids, and gases. It's the state of matter created when gas is further heated. But how does this relate the Kamehameha to the sun, you might ask? Well, as it turns out, our sun isn't actually yellow, it's actually all colors mixed together, or what we call white. The sun only appears yellow or orange because its smaller wavelengths, those containing the colors blue and violet, are spread out everywhere by Earth's atmosphere. So, our sun is a ball of white plasma, and as stated by the guys over at the Film Theory channel, and so is the Kamehameha wave. Okay, no, I mean, I don't know where you're getting this from at all. You know, Film Theory didn't help write Dragon Ball, <laughs> you, you know. And it's, been, it's not even plasma to begin with, it's key, and you know it's key because you bring this up later in the video. Uh, yeah, Go Goku's attacks aren't related to plasma whatsoever, so this point is also just completely invalid. In the now non-canon Dragon Ball GT series, we see Goku form a new type of Kamehameha wave called Kamehameha x 10. Okay, so the issue here is the same as what it was for Superman earlier on in the video. He's using a composite version of both Goku from GT and Dragon Ball Super. So, the issue with this is, Dragon Ball GT takes place in a completely different timeline from Dragon Ball Super. Completely different events happen, it takes place years on in, a, in advance as well, and it's just not canon. You, you literally just said that it's not canon. In the now non-canon Dragon Ball GT series... So I don't know why you're using it. I could make a version of Goku that's omnipotent, omnipresent, can beat anyone in all affection. 
but it's not canon, so just not valid. So why is Dragon Ball GT any more valid than, you know, or just as valid as Dragon Ball Super? Number four, energy absorption. While Goku can charge his key for the span of 10 episodes continuously, he can also absorb energy from external resources. This can be shown in 2014's Battle of Gods, as well as in the GT series when he used Baby's Death Ball to power up his Kamehameha x 10 wave. And in his fight against the evil Namekian known as Slug, Goku was able to harness some of the energy projected by the sun. The issue here is that Gobs is taking like feats completely out of context. The absorption technique known as the Genki Dama would just be classed as an attack, much as anything else would. Obviously the Lord Slug movie and Dragon Ball GT aren't canon, so they are irrelevant as we discussed earlier. And the absorption thing that happened with Beerus is only really happening with God Key. Even if, you know, you want to go with all that, you know, plasma BS, you know, it's just clearly different and has been stated to be different. So, yeah, it's only really happened with God Key and obviously he would be able to replicate that with Superman without, you know, Superman being exposed to it first, which could happen if, you know, Goku fights him in his God forms, but realistically he would have to be, like, exposed to so much of it and, you know, find a way to absorb it. And it's not as, you know, simple as, you know, fighting him, because, you know, otherwise Goku and Vegeta would have just absorbed God Key after their scuffle with Beerus. They had to physically go to a whole new realm to get it, and Goku had to absorb it into his base form from the God form. So, yeah, again, not really a great point here. Number 5, Obsidian. But what would happen if they were to be thrown through or near a volcano? And no, I'm not suggesting the heat from the lava that would hurt them, but the rocks around the area. Specifically, the volcanic rock known as obsidian. Obsidian is essentially a type of dried up lava, and they make up the sharpest knives we have today. According to Kyle Hill, a science writer and communicator that hosts the show Because Science on the YouTube channel Nerdist, obsidian is so sharp, having an edge of 3 nanometers thick, that it's thin enough to pass through the diameter of a DNA. So you're telling me, right? that Superman can hold a black hole just in his hand, but would be, like, hurt by a knife that can pass through human DNA. Okay then. 6. Nuclear Power Plants Nuclear missiles are notorious for being mankind's greatest creation that is also the gateway to their own destruction. And that stands for Superman too. In Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, he basically died from the atom bomb, but he was revived seconds later thanks to the sun. I mean, firstly, without prior knowledge, Goku would have no idea of this weakness of Superman. And second, you'd think Superman, you know, would be smart enough to see what Goku was trying to do and, you know, dip out of there. You know, it's a completely situational on the setting of the battle. So, well, yeah, it can be taken into account. It shouldn't be the be-all and end-all. This is a way Goku can win because it's not even guaranteed in the first place. For seven, power pull. Superman's next weakness right after Kryptonite is magic. This is what I mean by, like, kind of nitpicking when it comes to composite uh, Superman he's using here. Yeah, some versions of Superman are weak to magic, but there's also versions of Superman that aren't, or have just hasn't gotten a vulnerability to it. He'd just be weak to magic as anyone else would be weak to magic. So it's not a specific, you know, vulnerability. And Goku's never used the power pole since he was a teenager. So, you know, I highly doubt that he didn't think to use it if, you know, nothing else was working. Number 8, Key Weakness One of Superman's more obscure weaknesses is his vulnerability to Chi. Lex Luthor, Kal-El's archenemy, theorized that because Superman was solar powered by the sun, vital forces, such as Chi, would have very negative effects on him. Luthor even felt so confident in his speculation that he built an entire science spire dedicated to gathering all of the Chi energy on Earth to defeat Superman. Connecting this with Goku, well, everything he does is basically based off Chi. Or in the show's equivalent version of it, Ki. He practically lives and breathes it. Wait, hold on, play that back. Connecting this with Goku, well, everything he does is basically based off Chi. Or in the show's equivalent version of it, Ki. He practically lives and breathes it. Can I have that played just one more time, please? Well, everything he does is basically based off Chi. Basically based off Chi. Basically based off Chi. Our sun is a ball of white plasma. And as stated by the guys over at the Film Theory channel, and so is the Kamehameha wave. Basically based off Chi. And besides, this was more a hypothesis from Lex Luthor. Like, once, like, he didn't even attempt it. And after not attempting it, he didn't bother trying it again. Therefore, meaning he didn't feel that strongly about it. So, if you think, you know, if, if he actually thought they had Superman done there, you know, he would have 
kept at it, but you know, obviously he didn't, so that, you know, that, that point isn't really valid either. Number 9, Sound Waves. Remember when I compared the Kamehameha to the sun earlier and how they're both mainly constructed of plasma? Basically based off G. Number 10, Impact Force. Now Superman is well known for being the most overpowered superhero in terms of super strength, so much so that even the likes of Goku at Super Saiyan 3 seems like comparing an ant to a boot. It's widely believed that Superman is indestructible, but the hero Hawkman actually knocked him out with the Claw of Horus. The Claw of Horus is a weapon powered by the Earth's magnetic core, giving the user the power to literally punch people with the Earth. And to knock out the Superman, you'd have to punch him in the schnoz at a force of around 1 septillion newtons. That's equivalent to... Well, getting hit by planet Earth in the face. So apparently Superman only has planet level durability. So to get Superman's durability, we can compare him to the people he fights against because they're able to damage him and he's able to damage them. So they're quite relative to each other. So, you know, I guess, you know, Superman fighting Wonder Woman when Wonder Woman could drag around the sun, you know, that still puts her at his planet level. Superman throwing a solar system out of, the, uh, out of her own macrocosm, I guess that's only, also only planet level as well. Uh, you know, Superman fighting Golden Age Superman and it was going to collapse the the universe. You know, I guess that's only planet level as well. Uh, also, Superman fighting Doomsday um, and, you know, being able to remotely damage Doomsday. And this is the same Doomsday that was able to take a hit from Darkseid, who is capable of taking a hit of that had the power of a multiverse behind it. Yes, this is technically a more powerful Doomsday than the one that Superman fought, but are you really going to try and tell me that being hit with the power of a planet is more impressive than anything remotely close to a multiverse. Even if you go with your own logic of Superman being able to lift infinity. Infinity is more than a planet, it is bare minimum high universal. So I don't understand where you're coming from for this. And what you have there, uh, Mr. Gubbs, is what's known as an outlier. So yeah, that, that point is also just really, really dumb. This fight with Zamasu in Dragon Ball Super, Goku is shown just giving the demonic Supreme Kai a flurry of kicks, hit of a second, or 33.33 milliseconds. The distance his leg traveled was half of the length of his entire leg, which is 37.374 centimeters, since a human's leg is usually 42.65% of his or her total height. This means that Goku was able to kick at a speed of 11.2 meters per second, but this acceleration from 0 to 11.2 meters per second was almost instantaneous, resulting in a force of over 11,272 newtons. So, what Master Gubbs is trying to tell us here, right, is that Goku can only fight, you know, at 11 meters per second, even though he's about to disprove himself a few seconds later. And he also said that Super Saiyan Blue Goku isn't even remotely close to a planet level. Uh, okay, uh, I cannot be bothered explaining it. It's, I cannot be ex bothered explaining how powerful Goku is. If you want to, like, you know, have this disproven in a matter of a few seconds, you know, just go back in the video, maybe, or just go to, like, Goku Black versus Reverse Flash, or even my response video to Vegeta versus Wonder Woman, like, come on, I'm, t I'm tired of people saying that, like, Goku is ever close to planet level nowadays. Like, it's... It's actually... It's, it's so, like stupid to the point where I'm laughing. Like, it's, it's really dumb. But that would be the force Goku would have exerted at his base form. We didn't take into account his transformations yet. His Super Saiyan transformations are basically multipliers. Super Saiyan 1 is times 50, 2 is times 100, 3 is times 400, and 4 is times 4000. Well, the form he's in right now is Super Saiyan Blue, which is arguably around the same or stronger than his non-canon form Super Saiyan 4. So we're just going to ignore the fact that, you know, uh, Gubbs uses an unofficial multiplier for Super Saiyan 4 since there wasn't ever one given, but we actually figured out what the multiplier would be in the GT Goku vs. Dragon Ball Super Manga Goku video, which is around 200,000. Uh, and, you know, also he says that Goku does this in his base form, even though, you know, it has just been shown that he was in Super Saiyan Blue. And he also tries to say that Super Saiyan Blue is remotely comparable to Super Saiyan 4. You know, Super Saiyan 4 is Ozaru plus Super Saiyan. Are you going to try and tell me that Super Saiyan, like, also because Super Saiyan Blue is also Super Saiyan God plus Super Saiyan, so by your logic, Super Saiyan God is comparable to Ozaru, you know, the form that's a 10 times increase and was only show, it was first shown at the start of the series. Like, I, I actually can't. <laughs> I can't, like, please help. In Screw Attack's analysis of Goku, Wiz and Boomstick explicate that Goku was able to travel over 2.3 times the speed of light just at Super Saiyan 4. 
death battle literally halved Goku's speed. <laughs> like, if you look at it, instead of timesing Super Saiyan by 50, as we've already established in the video, they instead times it by 0 0.5. And even then, Goku's still much faster than 2.3 times the speed of light within Dragon Ball GT. As in base, he's shown travelling the afterlife of Picon, the afterlife that is, you know, a universe in size, and he does it in an extremely short amount of time, calculating out to around 4.83 uh, quadrillion times the speed of light, and he does this in base form alone, before even absorbing God Key into him, so, yeah, Death Battle isn't exactly a reliable source when it comes to, you know, Goku's speed. But why does travelling faster than the speed of light matter? Well, in Einstein's special theory of relativity, it stated that as an object approaches the speed of light, time appears to slow down for it, and the object itself will seemingly continue to gain mass. In layman's terms, the faster you go, the closer your mass goes to infinity. Now there's a rule here though that we must apply. No object in our world can travel at the speed of light. So that whole more than twice the speed of light thing for Goku is now gone. But that means it's gone for Superman too. So let's say they both travel at around 99.99999% the speed of light now. If Goku were to be traveling just a shade under the speed of light, then his mass would be so great that it would be much, much more powerful than that of the Clav Horus. Okay, so applying this logic, you know, no character in fiction whatsoever can be faster than light, without being infinite in power, of course, so, you know, characters are even relativistic whatsoever. You know, they obviously have infinite power and are high universal, so, you know when Piccolo destroyed the moon at relativistic speeds, you know, he's not actually moon level, he's actually, you know, uh, he's, he's actually high universal. You know, because that's just that's just how physics works in the real world, and it should definitely one hundred percent translate over to you know how physics work within Dragon Ball and fiction in general. How how like he has to be trolling at this point, like surely. Uh, and thankfully, that was all that there was in the video. If you enjoyed this video, dislike and subscribe. Don't send any hate over to Gub. He doesn't post anymore anyway, and this was four years ago, so. You know, hopefully he's moved on since then. And yeah, I will see you in the next video.